How's it going everybody? Welcome into the shop. It is great to have y'all here. Now, if you have followed me for a while, you know about my second channel called Have It Made. Um, it's uh, basically a channel about other crafts people. If you're new to the channel, you're now just hearing about that. Um, we're going to be making some changes to that channel. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that we haven't posted in a while. I think I greatly overestimated how much work would go into this channel. Uh, my brother-in-law, Wes Vita, and I started at the beginning of the year. and We've posted four to five videos uh, this year. So at that rate, we're not going to grow the channel at all. So what we're doing is we're shifting that content into my channel and creating a series called Have It Made. So everything on the Have It Made channel now is going to be unlisted, and we're going to repost all the videos onto this channel, give them a fresh start, and be posting new videos coming into the beginning of the year. So um, let me just explain a little bit about Have It Made. I, I've been fortunate to grow... A really nice following here on YouTube, um, and I just I have a real passion for craft and crafts people and, and the work they do. So that's where Have It Made comes in. I, I travel to other shops and I film kind of a documentary style of their work, tell their story, what they do, help promote them, help show uh, what it's like, what true craft is, where you dedicate your life to it, you make a lot of sacrifices, and you work hard and you do a high level of work. So that's what this channel is about. It's called Have It Made. It'll be branded that way, so when you see the thumbnail, you'll know it's a Have It Made series. We'll also have it in the playlist, obviously, so you can watch all those videos. So be on the lookout over the next, um, you know, three or four months. We'll be posting some of these in, into the channel and kind of seeing how the response is. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. And uh, this first video is on Wilson Capron, a very talented bit and spur maker here in Texas. Super cool guy. I had a blast filming this. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy it. People ask me, how'd you get there? How'd you get to where you're at? Well, where's there? Where's that? I'm on a journey. This thing that I'm on is not a destination, it is a journey. It's a day in and day out process to better myself and be the best that I can be. That's what I want to be, it's the best bit and sperm maker I can be. The way I got into bits and spurs was, was accidental uh, for the most part. Uh, I was living in East Texas with the Darnell family, um, going to college and was roping and uh, got to a point where I needed to make a little money to pay for entry fees. So, so Greg was at a point to where he needed some help in the shop and I went to work for Greg. Um, we worked in the shop for a total of three years about a year and a half into it, he asked me if I wanted to engrave, wanted to try to engrave, and, and I thought, well, you know, that might be fun. I, I, I asked Greg, I said, you think I can do it? And he said, sure, it's just like you're roping. Uh, just practice. And man, it was just like my roping. I loved it. And, it. and so my first spark probably came from the engraving aspect, um, the artistic side of what was going on. Um, from that, it has bled off into every aspect of the bits and spurs is, is uber important and so much fun. And I don't want to just be an engraver, but as I got started, that was the original deal. As I said, I worked for Greg for three years, went on uh, at that point, it was time to go home. Uh, didn't really realize or think I could be a professional bit and spur maker, but I had some orders and, and planned on filling those. And, and I was buying equipment as I was uh, preparing to leave Greg and, and uh, getting him set up with somebody to fill my spot and all that. And, and then I went home and, and about six months after being home, realized, holy cow, I got a lot of, I was a full-time bit and spur maker. That's all I was doing was building bits and spurs. And, and uh, the process to truly waking up and realizing I was doing it as a profession probably was a two or three year process, but uh, I was living with my mom and dad and and married and we, we bought a house in Midland and moved to Midland and woke up one day and I was a bit in sperm maker. That's kind of how it all got started. Purely accidental, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love what I'm doing. And uh, I left Greg when I was 25 years old and, and I tell everybody I retired at 25. And I work 
you know, long hours to keep that retirement going, but I love it. It's fun. Then the craft aspect of it, which I now believe after much thought is is, is a beautiful thing. It's not, it's not the craft fair at the bazaar of the church, I mean, which is beautiful too. Um, but craft is not a watered down negative connotation of art. It fits right along with art. It is a part of art. It is, the, it is bringing the concept to reality. So um, for me, it satisfies the, it, it gives me the ultimate satisfaction because as I create it on paper and as I feel it in my heart, then I can come to the shop and I can bring that to reality. I can bring the craft to reality and it's a tangible thing. Um, often, as I'm a bitten spur maker, I'm a part of the West, is that what I create um, is, is telling the Western story. But because of craft and being able to create the piece, then I not only tell the story, but I am the story. My business birds are what founded the West. They were on the horses, in the horse's mouth, and in the, in the, on the cowboy's boot. Uh, the saddles were on the back. It, it is the items that created the West. It's, it founded the West. It discovered it, and and uh, craft is is was what allowed that to happen. Allowed those pieces to to become real. As a custom guy, everything. Starts out with the computer or the drawing paper, and, and uh, I then take take that design and I'll print it out on a piece of paper, and and take it to a bandsaw and use a bandsaw to to cut my designs out to start the process. Ironically, the really really nice stuff, the stuff that that's the really high end stuff, is all done by hand. Files, um, the polishing stones, and all that creates the finish. Will I or can I use a, a belt sander on some of that stuff? Absolutely, if, if it fits and I can control it, uh, I certainly will use a, a belt sander to do all of that. Uh, I'll use machinery, I'll use mills and lays and stuff to, to work on the pieces. Uh, for the most part, the machinery is used to create jigs and different things that help me make the bits and spurs. Um, I certainly will use them and as I'm learning through my through my journey of being a craftsman here, uh, I'm learning how to use the mill and the lathe more to execute the design that I'm working on with my bits and spurs. I weld everything with a TIG welder for the most part. Uh, TIG welders are, are really good, you get good bit penetration with a minimal amount of cleanup. Um, it's efficient, so I can, it happens quickly uh, and very good. I can weld in little bitty tight areas with my, with my welders. Um, with my engraving, um, I, I use a Steve Lindsay handpiece. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a, a turntable that I built myself. I have a Leica microscope. Um, it's, it, <laughs> it's, I've been engraving for, I started engraving uh, when I was 23. Uh, I've been engraving 20, 22 years now or something like that, 22 years. And I'm still learning how to run the darn thing. Uh, it's it's quite complicated, and, and uh, I thought I knew how to engrave. Well, I went to I went to Louisiana to study under Sam Alfano for a week. Uh, I told Sam, big bold me, told Sam as I was going. I said, Hey Sam, we probably just need to do pencil and paper type stuff. Learn the design and the drawing aspect of it. Uh, mechanically, I've been engraving for a long time, and I'm pretty comfortable with that. Well, that was about three years ago that I went. I'm still trying to learn how to cut the way he did. I'm still trying to learn how to mechanically make the cut. So uh, it, 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 you, you never quit learning. And, and I learned a lot by opening my darn mouth. But um, the, the engraving bench is, is its own, own profession in its own right.
Be here all week. Um, you hear a doctor's office referred to as, as, as the doctor is practicing medicine. Well, I'm practicing business spray making. That's what I do day in and day out with my customers. Each person is paying me to practice and play and get better on this journey that I'm on. Uh, is, is, uh, I, I don't ever want to get there. I never will get there. And yeah, I guess as I get old and shaky, then, then the body won't allow me to, to create to the same level I have. But, but um, I'll always be trying to better myself and, and enjoy the journey. And, and as far as being a master, well, or the best, I was at a long time ago because my mom thought so and the rest of it. You can go to Facebook too, social media will tell you we're the best, but who cares about all that. Just enjoy what you're doing, work hard at it, expose yourself to people better than you. Um, getting a critique from somebody is one of the most nerve-wracking things in the world because we all want to tap on the back, but that's not going to get you anywhere. The tap on the back's not going to do it the person and my dad was great at this and people that know me and my story know about my dad um, my dad would say that's nice son but and sometimes three hours later we'd get done with the butt and, and in the beginning that was rather difficult but it, it, it was it's one of the the greatest blessings i've ever had is to be able to to figure out how to make it better and to be able to repeat it a blind hog can find an acre every now and then but how are you going to repeat success day in and day out. We have to figure out what made it or what didn't make it and, and uh, made it good or made it bad. And, and uh, that journey rolls on day in and day out.